live or Alex has got his music. All right, music boy. Let's go, DJ. <laughs> I kind of forgot my speaker, but I do some quick beatboxing real fast. No, let's not. <laughs> <laughs> and now, introducing Opportunity Investors. Welcome, everybody. All right, all right, all right. Hey, so are we live? Oh, we are live. What's up, everybody? Opportunity Investors. This is May 2021. The masks are down and we Gone. are in full speed. We are excited to be here. This is our, our second meeting in person. Um, we're still trying to figure out how to get back to in person, but uh, I will say that it's uh, it's just good to be around other human beings. So Truth. Thank you. Truth. Thank you guys for coming out. Um, we're going to be talking tonight about hard money loans. Uh, when you're doing real estate investing, one of the things you commonly run into is running out of capital. And so we want to jump into uh, just how to get past those hurdles. And uh, one of the ways is hard money loans. Um, I'm Alex Winfield with uh, Coastal Group and the Winfield Real Estate Team. I am a local real estate agent here in Hampton Roads. Uh, we work with everything from retail to commercial, um, focus on retail. But uh, we do a lot of investing. We love investing. It's a, a, it's a passion of ours, passion of mine, and passion of our team. We've got um, Dan and Ricky just joined the team. Well, Dan's, Dan's been on for a while. But uh, the team is in place so that we can do things like work with investors and, and, and service them well. And um, what, uh, what we wanted to do with, with uh, Opportunity is um, talk about real estate investing. That's kind of what we do. All we do. Um, Sean Bowen over here has, I think we, we what, joined after the first month. Actually, you came and spoke at the first month. Yep. And then we we're like, ah, oh, this, this kind of works. This, yep. This is, you know, this is what we like to do. So basically the idea was this. I like to talk about real estate. Sean likes to talk about real estate. And beer. I like to learn <laughs> about real estate. Sean likes to learn about real estate. And we're like, you like to drink beer? So, so breweries was the natural place for us to meet up at. Of course. And, and that's how this kind of all got Of started. course. So um, if you guys haven't been here before, we got a little online group here. Um, Opportunity Investors is about real estate investing and uh, the opportunities there, the strategies, how to do the financing, and the... Um, we try to bring in industry professionals and experts and have them talk about relevant subjects that are related to our area, our market, what we're trying to do. Um, and then we try to, you know, talk about those ideas, digest them, and we usually do it over a cold, crafty beer. So, so that last element to our group is networking. And of course, the last year, that's been a little difficult. Um, but uh, we've done good. We've kept it going. Yeah, we've, we've kept it online. We've done our best. Yeah, we've yeah, yeah. Tremendous. We've done really good with that, I think, compared. So, uh, yeah, man, we're, we're, we're here now. We're excited to be in person. We're excited to be back and start building this back up again. Um, but throughout that whole time, we were doing virtual. And it, it actually was, it was cool because we got so many people that in the Hampton Roads area that are overseas with the military. And uh, a lot of those people tuned in more than they would have been able to before. Um, but let's do this. Let's start it how we normally do. Let's, uh, let's learn a little bit. Let's, uh, network and let's raise your glass for a quick toast. Oh, I'm out of beer. All right. I got like a little beer with a bug in it. It'll work. <laughs> I'm serious. There's a bug You're in it. <laughs> let's go. May your castle be secure and your cup overflow. You. Cheers. Cheers. Hold on. We got to do a list, at least a little thing on it. Yeah. Yeah. Bing. <laughs> Nice. We did a lot of fake clings throughout the uh, virtual. <laughs> virtual clings. <laughs> virtual clings. All right, guys. So I'm Sean Bowen, uh, Full Circle Investment Group and WholesalingOutOfTheBox.com. Um, my specialty is wholesaling, rehabbing, 
and really focusing on creative financing. Okay. So if you guys have been following us for any time, you know, most of the guys here know me and then guys online. Um, so we are very, very versed in the wholesale game, finding deals and then doing creative finance to those deals. If you can't make a cash offer, how do you take over sub two? How can you make a bridge loan? Um, getting creative, right? And fortunate enough, uh, we have Lisa here today that is going to talk with us and help us understand a little bit to the hard money side of things. Okay. So this is something that um, Lisa's been working with Richmond Mortgage for, you say, four years, five years? Five years. Five years. Mm -hmm. So very versed, very uh, understanding of multiple different types of situation. And I think she's going to bring a lot of value to this group. Um, so I just want to jump right into it, guys. I don't, there's no reason to hang out and talk about anything else, but this is what we're here for. So we'll pass it off to Lisa and let her get it going. All right. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Even though it was short notice, uh, <laughs> I'm just going to keep on mentioning that. We don't have a, a full blown presentation for you, but hopefully you'll get some good information out of this. I'm Lisa Girardi. I'm with Richmond Mortgage. And you may have heard of Mike Crumbine. He is the OG of hard money lending in this area. Uh, we lend in Rich, the Richmond and surrounding area and all of Tidewater. We're about half and half. Um, he started the company uh, 21 years ago. And like uh, you said, I've been with him for five years. I think I started with him as a bookkeeper, setting up the original company. And he called me 16 years later. No, he emailed me 16 years later and said, you know, he'd grown, he needed a full-time controller, and, you know, was I interested? And I was between gigs, and I said, yeah. So, so that's the lesson is keep all your emails and check them all. Even from, you know, 20 years ago, it, it can pay off for a really great job. So anyway, um, I told him, I said, you know, I'll be your accountant, but you know, that's really boring. Uh, you know, I want to get on the real estate side because that's what I've been doing most of my career, you know, as an accountant involved tangentially, but always lending residential forward loans, reverse mortgages, uh, SBA loans, commercial loans. So I've always been lending against, uh, real estate. And I've got to say that hard money lending it, you know, I had to really, dial back because it, it's a different animal. What hard money lending means is we're an asset-based asset -based lender. We're truly lending against the hard asset, the, the, the property. We are looking to the property to pay us back. And for every single loan we look at, we say, we, do we want to own this property? And can we get paid back quickly if the borrower were to, you know, drop dead of COVID or something like that? So, <laughs> um, God forbid. <laughs> So, I mean, I like the use of that's like current <laughs> events, exactly. Yeah, yes. I like it. Like it. It's uh -huh. current events, so keeping it real, keeping <laughs> it, it real. I like happen, it. All right, but it could happen. Yeah, I you like don't it. know. Yeah, yeah. Um. Anyway, so we lend. Um. A, we can lend up to seventy percent of the ARV. So we do all kinds of loans. We do. We try to do creative financing, but the, the basic thing we do is fix and flip, new construction. But every once in a while, we'll lend on a, a wholesale deal. We'll, we can do double closes. We do some gap funding as um, no payment uh, second mortgages. If the LTV all works out, I mean, these are, you know, things that are a little beyond the norm. We do joint ventures. But today, we're just going to talk about your basic fix and flip and how you would get a loan from Richmond Mortgage. So, um, what I was talking, saying about being an asset-based lender, that means we're not looking to the borrower for, we're not looking at their income, we're not looking at their credit score and their ability to repay the loan. We're looking to the asset to repay the loan. So we're looking at two things, really, the asset and the person's experience. Um, more experience, always better, but we do lend to first-time flippers, first-time rehabbers. And um, we, we can do up to 70% of the ARV, the after repair value. So keep that in mind. And I wanted to show you an example. Oh, she's not ready. We'll do that later. Uh, <laughs> we want to do an example. Do you, you want to, oh, you can't show it? Yeah. 
Okay. okay. All right. Well, forget it. <laughs> so as I was saying, one thing that really sets us apart is that we do not check credit scores. We do not pull your credit report. This loan isn't going to go on your credit report. So that's a lot different while a bank is still asking you for documentation and updates to your documentation, we've already closed the loan. So that's the difference that a hard money lender brings. They can act quickly. We have closed loans in 24 hours after receiving the application. We've done it a couple times since I've been there. Now that's not the norm, but um, we can definitely do that. The, the norm is about three weeks. However long it takes to get title back is really what we're waiting for usually. Um, and, you know, right after that, if we've approved the loan, that means we're going to come to the money with the, come to the table with the money. So <clears throat> what you do, um, to get a hard money loan, um, you go to our website and, which is richmondmortgage.com and it's, it's beautiful. We, we would have showed you, but anyway, <laughs> it's nice. And then you click on the five minute loan application. And um, it's not the most beautiful user interface I've ever seen, but it gets the job done. <laughs> and it's called the five-minute loan application because it takes five minutes. But that doesn't mean that you didn't you put five minutes of, of work into it. Hopefully, you've done a lot of due diligence before you put this in. And this is you giving us all the information we need to make the decision. Um, so, you know, it asks for, uh, obviously, your name and, and address and email and all that, but it asks for your borrower company. And the reason it asks for that is we can only lend to LLCs, corporations, and trusts. That's because this is a business loan. It's a business loan for business purposes. So if you haven't formed an LLC, that's cool. You know, just say LLC to be formed. Um, TBD, yes. So it is a business loan. Right. It's a business loan. We cannot lend to people. We cannot lend to people on their primary residence. It has to be a house for investment purposes. So either you want to sell it to flip it or you want to keep it and you want to refinance it and do the, the Burr method. And, and um, you know, so buy it, fix it up, get your renters in, refinance you know, or you're building a new house, or maybe you're um, applying because you want to get, you've got a rental that's free and clear, and you're getting some cash so you can go and do another deal. Um, those are things that, you know, people use the funds for. So, uh, so then it's going to ask for the property address. Don't put your address again. So many people do that. <laughs> so don't do that. This is the, the house you, you want to buy. So, um, then it's going to ask for the purchase price. And, uh, you know, these days we're seeing a lot of competition. And so a lot of people are writing contracts with escalation clauses. So I would like to know, you know, you want to offer 120, but you're willing to go up to, you know, 139. And you've done your analysis and you've, decided, you've said, you know, 139 is as high as I can go to make this deal work. And it's good for me to know that because I can underwrite it sort of thinking best case and worst case. You know, maybe you will get it for 120, but maybe you're going to have to put in an escalation clause or maybe, you know, you're going to go back and forth and get into negotiations. Um, usually the, the, uh, what somebody wants after they, they do an application is they want proof of funds to submit with their, their offer. Um, so that they'll be taken seriously. And so that we're basically giving you, you know, your approval letter at this point. So there's a lot of information we want to know. And I've given people, you know, proof of funds. I've given them, you know, three different ones for, you know, different amounts so that they can, you know, but, uh, or just a range, wh whatever you want to do. So then it's going to ask for a description of the company. And so many people, no, a description of the property. So many people copy paste, you know, the, the realtor's, you know, description. Oh, great investment, you know, uh, just needs a little love. And, and, 
you know, a little hyperbole is always good, but but what I really want to know is the square footage. I'm in the rough. Uh, yeah, right, right. Uh, invest, rough. Investor special is always a, a good one, yeah. So, you know, I want square footage. I want bedrooms and baths. Uh, let me know if it's a 3-2, are, are you going to, or if it's a 3-1 and a half, are you going to make it a 3-2 and a half? You know, let me know that kind of thing. The year it was built. Um, because I'm going to start, I'm going to do a draw. Google drive by, we call it, uh, of the house. I'm going to look at the neighborhood. I'm going to look, I'm going to see, you know, is this a hundred year old house that's just crumbling and needs to be taken down to the studs? Or is this, you know, a house built in the you know, brick house and built in the 60s and, you know, is, is really kind of in good shape and, and just needs, you know, paint and carpet. So, um, you know, is this house, you know, next to a crack house? Is it, is it, you know, down the street from that convenience store that, you know, everybody knows is like a drug corner or something like that? You know, I'm, I'm looking at all these things. Is it just on a busy road or is it in the neighborhood? And I'm sort of, you know, adding up the pros and cons um, to, you know, try and come up with my ARV, see it if, if it agrees with your ARV. So, um, Let's see. So that was the description. Then we're going to get in. We always ask <laughs> um, on our application, is there a, a full bath that is not the, the primary bedroom a bath? So well, we're, we're, we're a little partial to two bathroom houses. One bathroom house is not so great in general. If it's, you know, 700 square feet and only has space for one bathroom and all the other houses in the neighborhood are like that and selling well and getting contracts in four days, well, that's fine. But in general, you know, two bathroom house, two, two full baths is, is better than one, and one and a half. So we're doing this kind of mental, mental thing. I've, I'm going to look on the MLS, and of course, those pictures a lot of times are going to be putting the best foot forward. So it would be really great if you've, let's say you've been there. Maybe you took your contractor through. Maybe you are a contractor. Maybe you've been doing rehabs for years. You know, I'd love to see pictures inside and out um, of, of every room. And things I'm looking for, I'm looking for, you know, are there stains on the ceiling? Are the, the, are the, the what condition of the floors in? Because I'm kind of adding up the, the rehab as I look around, you know, outside. I'm looking for foundation issues and cracks, you know, you know fissures in the, in, the, in the bricks and things like that. Standing water, you know, any flood damage. One of the first things I'm going to do in this area is I'm going to check to see if it's in the flood zone. Um, in general, we don't lend in, in flood zones, but um, if there's a you know, flood certificate that you know, shows that the sill plates above the base flood elevate, that's not it, but okay, yes. Then, then we, we can probably go forward with it. But if not, that's probably not going to be something we want to look at. And you can check that yourself on the FEMA website. So especially for this area, that's important. Um, let's see. So then it's going to go along, and it's going to ask about the rehab budget. And we've got all these little categories. You know, how much is the roof going to be? How much is the foundation? How much will the kitchen and the bath? And a lot of people will go, oh, it's going to be a $70,000 rehab, you know. And, and I may agree with you. I may be like, eh, you know, yeah, I, I, think, I think 70 is, I, I think you're right. But really, we need this filled out um, because, you know, it lets me know what you want to do and, and what you're not going to do. You know, if there's no number for roof, it's because you think the roof's okay and doesn't need to be replaced. Well, well, that tells me something because I may disagree or I may agree. So I, I need to know, you know, there's different levels of, of rehab. Maybe you say, I've gotten applications where people will say, I haven't decided if I'm going to sell it or keep it. If I keep it, I'm going to spend 30 to fix it up with carpet and paint. But if I sell it, I want to really, you know, jazz up the kitchen. And so it'll be more like 50. So those kind of things are things I want to know. And I can tell that from the rehab budget, whether the rehab budget is adequate. Maybe it's too much. Maybe it's too little. 
And um, so that's the kind of thing I'm looking for. And if you give me, um, if, and, you know, let's say you've already, you've got software that does this. Let's say you've got, you know, a detailed explanation of this down to the number of doorknobs you need and, you know, switch plates. Great, that's great. You know, I, I'd like to look at that. Um, so you don't have to fill out our little categories. But, um, you know, it is important. That's, that's the work you do to show me you've thought about this. <laughs> um, and so that's always important. And it always also will back up the, the pictures. You know, if I see a bunch of water stains and you're saying the roof's good, I'm going to go, well, you know, what, what's happening here? Did it just get a new roof? Maybe it did. And I, I just don't know. Right, yeah. So um, that kind of thing is important. Um, then we're going to ask you your exit strategy. And we've already talked about that a little bit. Are you going to sell it? If so, how much are you going to sell it for? And that's where we get into, you know, running the comps. And um, I'm always I'm going to look in the area, and I'm going to compare it to houses of comparable size. So you know, don't tell me, hey, this uh, 700 square foot house is selling for you know 265 dollars a square foot. So therefore, my 1600 square foot house. Is going to sell for that same 265 square square foot? No, it, it's not, because that house is is twice as big. It it doesn't work that way. You need to you need to compare houses that are closer in in size, and and that whole bathroom thing I was talking about too. You you want to compare three twos to three twos, and it doesn't have to be exact. And um, we've even found um, houses of similar style. You should compare those, like. Uh, through a bunch of analysis, we've realized that um, tri-levels will sell at a discount to uh, compared to like a, a two-story or a ranch or a you know a cape or something like that. So uh, we're, we're looking at all kinds of things, and sometimes you can't get exact comps. You know, sometimes it's just the area. You know, we 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 were looking at a house. Um, that's you know old from the 60s and it's surrounded by all these neighborhoods of you know four hundred thousand dollar houses well that's great but that doesn't make that house worth four hundred thousand that one's probably probably gonna it's a little cape with tiny little rooms upstairs compared to these you know brand new four-story houses not four-story four hundred thousand dollar houses they're not gonna they're just not comparable it's never going to be that. Even if you, you know, got it and make it new, it's still not going to be comparable to that. So we're looking at, at, at all that kind of thing. Um, and let's say you have comps. Maybe you found comps. Maybe your realtor found comps. And so show them to me. So, it, like, if we disagree, I can, I can consider them or I can be like, oh, I didn't, I didn't see that. <laughs> You're right. You know? Um, so, uh, there, and well, and then back to the thing of what are you doing with it? You know, maybe you're not fixing it up to sell. Maybe you just want to get it nice and get it so that you can qualify for a refinance. You want to, um, you know, you, you're using our money just to buy the house quickly, you know, purchase it, uh, fix it up, get, get some renters in there. Um, many of uh, these long-term lenders, they'll have various and sundry, you know, terms, um, things like we want you to have owned it for six months or we want you to have the renters in there for 60 days or something like that. I want to know all that as your exit plan, if that's your exit plan as opposed to selling it because that's a different ball game. So then I'm going to think, well, you know, do you, do you qualify for that loan? What are the terms? And so we can think about that. So if you're doing something like a burst strategy, right? You're saying that you should get pre-qualified with the long-term lender mm -hmm. before the deal potentially. I think so. I mean, as best as you can. It's usually far off, and you know, banks don't seem to be able to look at you know this horrible house and say, yeah, we'll end on that. But you know, in general, do you qualify for their underwriting criteria? The credit score, the Will, will you have, you know, let's say they will only let it up to, you know, 80%. Will you have that? And um, um, all those little other things that they have, like owning it for a certain amount of time or having renters in there for a certain amount of time, that kind of thing. Just to, so we'll know 
you know, this loan isn't going to pay off before six months because he has to own it, you know, this long before he'll qualify. Yep. So that's what's important about the exit strategy to know what you're going to do with it. Um, Can you go back real quick? Because I mm -hmm. think there would probably be some guys online asking this question. Can you talk about running comps yep. from your standpoint of what you're looking for? Meaning, how do I, where do I go to know I can't go to a certain area or I don't go over this line? How how far out, like that kind of stuff. Yeah, that that's an art, really. Um, you know, I say in more urban areas, keep it keep it close. You know, keep it two and three blocks in each direction because, you know, I live in the city and you know I live on a certain street, but literally three blocks over there, you know, I, I hear the gunshots every night, right. and you know that that street's just a different ball game, you okay. know, than than where I live. Yeah, Hampton Roads, or you say but, but wherever? Wherever, yeah, in Hampton Roads, you know, any any part of a, a city, you know, where it's city blocks. I, I don't go many blocks away. I try to stay pretty close in that same neighborhood. Um, How about you know, the square footage? Square footage, I try to stay really close with that, too. I try to stay within, you know, just a 15% maybe differential okay. in the in the square footage. This is what I do. And I, I notice that appraisers will, you know, They'll, they'll have a much bigger range, and that's okay. I mean, you can adjust for it, and you know. But but like I said, the the price per square foot of a seven hundred square foot house is, I mean, in the in the same neighborhood is going to be much higher than an eighteen hundred square foot house. It, that's just the way it works. It's it's not one for one. It's not you know. So that's not apples to apples. Right. That's not apples <laughs> to apples. Right. You need to. Yeah. So you want similar size, similar location, similar style, and similar, um, well, let's see, I already said area, style, size, yeah. So what if you had a two-story home, mm -hmm. but you only had one-story comps? How would you look at that? Right, you, right. I mean, sometimes you can't get all those things. So, I mean, ideally, that's what you'd like. And these days, when we've got so many sales yeah. everywhere you look, there's plenty of comps to be had. Okay. But in times where we don't have all this going on, um, you might you know, have to go further out or you might have to compare a one story to a two story and that's, that's fine. I mean, okay. we're, we're getting a general idea, you know, and we're always comparing the, the house that you're talking about to a house that's been fixed up, you know, that's got the granite, that's got the stainless steel, that's got the, you know, light gray paint that everybody is using. <laughs> <laughs> so sick of it. So sick of it. I mean, I, I can look at the pictures like this fast going, yep, mm -hmm, gray and white. Yep. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> right. Yeah. Call that like the investor special. Yeah. Uh -huh, right. Yeah. But you know, it works. So, okay. yeah. But anyway. <laughs> right. Right. So, um, right. We're always going to compare to houses that have been fixed, fixed up. So, because that's what we're looking at we're looking at a house that's been fixed up so um if we've you know done our done our job right then we are lending up to 70 percent of that fixed up value okay. but you're right you can't always find comps that are perfect but these days with so many a lot of times you can't you okay. can go this house is exactly like this house and he's fixing it up just like it was this one's fixed up and that's what I'm going with. Okay. Cool. <laughs> yeah. I get that. I get that a lot on the oh, wholesale yeah. side. Townhouses, right? Yeah. Yeah. Don't don't try to tell me it's going to sell any more than the exact same one next door. It's it's it, yeah. Uh, right. 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 Yeah. Now, of course, if you're looking at something that was a year ago, uh, you got to add 10, 15 percent because that's what's happened literally in this market. That's another so, good question. How far time. back? You go. Six months in general. Okay. But if you've got an area that doesn't have as many, you'll go back, I'll go back 12. Sometimes if it's a really special property and something strange about it, I'll look at two years maybe. Okay. Will you guys look at those top comps in there? So you've got the property that's been flipped. It's kind of your um, kind of pilot house. Is that what you guys are looking at? Um, let's say as a Compared to somebody who's just listing their house and they're not flipping it completely, you don't look at those necessarily as the standard, but you guys might because that's the goal, right? To get to, to, get to that top level. 
you guys use that top level as kind of your your pinnacle or is that kind of thrown out? Well, I mean, I'm always going to be conservative, so I'm always discounting. Like I told you all the things I'll discount for. I'll discount for a busy road, and I'll discount for the fact that that house is gorgeous, you know, and but I don't think this flip's going to be that gorgeous, so I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come down off of that, that top number. I'm going to always be cutting down and being more yeah. conservative, which doesn't, shouldn't frustrate anyone from, you know, asking for the moon, you know, that's fine, but um, I'm going to look at it from what I think we can get for it, so, and quickly, quickly, that's, that's the other key, you know, we don't want to be rating around in that kind of situation, right, so, you know, things like a, a house being in a rural area, a lot of times we won't lend in a rural area, but, uh, you know, that's the thing these days, so we're getting more. Spreading further and further. Uh huh. Yeah, we're going a little further out, and um, people like a little more space now, and so we are looking at those. So. Um, to finish this out, we got about five minutes left. What do you think helps close this out so we can get to some Q and A for you? Um, well, one thing we didn't talk, talk about was um, down payment. Okay. So we are getting in some great deals with great down payments. And of course, that's always going to make us feel good, especially if you're doing this for the first time is a down payment where you're participating in the deal. It's called skin in the game. And I really hate that expression. I don't want to use it. But anyway, it really is it's real, like, right? Yeah, it's real. It's real. It's real. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh, but real statement. It's called a down payment. <laughs> okay, <laughs> let's just stick with that. <laughs> anyway, so, right. So we're going to want between 10 and 20%. Um, and I say that because everything depends on the, the asset, the, the property we're talking about. So the um, more you can bring, the better. But also realize that you should also keep some um, for what if the project goes over and you know something happened that you didn't that you didn't realize? Let's say this is one of those hundred year old houses, which we probably wouldn't do for a first time person. But um, you know, you open up the wall and there's all this termite damage. You didn't count on that. You know, like all the HGTV shows. Like, yep. oh my goodness, we never knew <laughs> this was going to happen in the basement. So yeah, so um, ha have some money for for overages. Just real quick on that say you know how much would you say to i know you have a certain amount you got to put in mm -hmm. but then also how much would you set aside for for those overtures and it's just good if you've you've got some reserves about you know 10 percent, another 10 percent on top of that maybe so 10 percent down 10 percent reserve I, i'm thinking 10 percent of the uh of the the repairs not of not of the whole project oh, you know okay. once you've purchased it 10% of the purchase price, 10% of the, the repairs. That's your down payment. Have have a, have a reserve, you know, for, for unexpected expenses. It's almost like 15%, really. Mm -hmm. Right. For, for a lot of deals. Right. But, you know, once we have experience with someone, we're doing things like funding 100% of the deal. And uh, we're doing no payment loans. We're do we can do all kinds of things once we've got a track record with you and you've brought a lot of projects in on time, on budget. So that's when the real creative financing comes mm -hmm. in. Very cool. All right. Um, Ashley, I know you said you had some questions online a second ago. Did you want to hit those up and then we'll, I'll repeat it for you? Are that a microphone? Okay. Okay, so the question was, can Richmond Morgan lend to a sole proprietor so that when we go to refi, we can do a residential mortgage and not be stuck with a commercial loan with an LLC? Right. No, we cannot. We, we need to lend to an LLC or a corporation. Um, but many people, your attorney can help you with it when you go to refi to, to deed it over to yourself and, and refi if you want to own it in your personal name. But a lot of people want to keep a, a rental property in their LLC, but that can definitely be done because, you, and, you know, if you can get those great conventional rates, 
then plenty of people do that. They just, there's a transfer at that, at that closing where it comes back out of the LLC and into your personal name, but that's and legal. And that's kind of a good point. I know we talked about the birth strategy a little bit. You kind of have to do um, hard money loan that you guys do um, in a business mm -hmm. um, name. And then for a conventional loan, you get to do it in a personal name, but you're saying you could potentially just have an attorney set it up so that it could be pretty smooth. Mm -hmm. I don't really get involved in that because that is happening at the at the, the sale closing. But best person to um, talk to would be your type, you know, your closing agent or an attorney about doing that. But okay. I know that people do that. Okay. But we need to make it in an LLC corporation or a trust. Yeah, we've got a couple more. Um, do you only cover purchase price or is any of the rehab covered as well with the funding? And oh. adding on to that, do you cover wholesale fees? Because I know some uh, lenders do not. <laughs> we, we do add, we can add the wholesale fee to the purchase price. That's fine. Um, we definitely lend towards the purchase price and towards the, the rehab. The way it works is when you go to closing and you're purchasing the house, your down payment will go 100% to the purchase price. And the remainder will go in, a, in construction escrow and given to you in construction draws. We didn't talk about that, but we make those just as easy as we do our application. We try to. Um, we've got Terrence, who's great. Everybody loves Terrence, and he's real easy to work with. I had a, a discussion with a borrower the other day. He keeps not borrowing for the construction money, and I'm, what, but now he's running short, and he's saying, can you lend towards the rehab? I said, of course we can. Why didn't you ask that before? He said, because I don't want to do draws, and because they're so horrible. I said, they're not horrible with us. So, you know, we try to make it easy. So um, you've worked with Terrence, right? Yeah. Yeah. Isn't he a delight? He's awesome. Right. He's awesome. He is. <laughs> mm -hmm. Very cool. Yeah. Anything else online, question wise? Yes. Uh, what types of interest rates are being offered right now? Um, well, of course, interest rate and that kind of thing is going to depend on, on every deal. Um, it, it's going to vary. So, uh, I mean, I can say right now the average rate is about 10.5% for your average deal for, you know, average borrower. Is that in so. a one-year term or six-month term? That is on an annualized basis. So you're going to pay a portion of that depending, you know, divide it by four, you know, if, if you're only keeping it for 90 days. And we don't have any prepayment penalties. We uh, prorate things down to the day. And so you're, you know, the quicker you do it, the, the less you pay. What do you think the average length of deal you're doing is? I don't know. I really need to get that data point. <laughs> I love to analyze stuff, and I haven't gotten to that. We've been so busy lately. I'm just curious because yeah. we always, I'm always like, man, there's no way they're doing it that fast. And then people I'm working with are like, oh, yeah, we're going to try to do it in like three months. I'm like, there's no way you're going to turn it in three months. Like, So I'm just curious what y'all are seeing. You know. Everybody says, oh, we're going to turn this in 60 days. And I go, mm-hmm. Okay. And they don't. You can't get a window in 60 days. <laughs> right, right, right. So I, I would say most are being done in about four, four to five months, um, you know, completed in, in the 120-day range. But then you got to get it on the market, and then you've got to wait that long time for, you know, the borrower, the, the new borrower to close. And those are getting delayed and pushed back and pushed back. And even the, re the refinances, of course, are being you know, prioritize after the purchases. So, you know, it'll be the better part of six months. We Our general loan term is nine months. Nothing mad about that. We can make it for a year if there was some need to. Um, but most people don't, don't uh, use the whole nine months. And the good ones definitely don't use the whole nine months. So I know a lot of the hard money loan programs are based on a, a month, a month time frame. Like you get to like, four months and it goes up mm -hmm. Do you guys have like a certain time point when it when it starts kind of escalating um it's not that it escalates it's that anything we've been deferring at the end of that loan term at the end of that nine months we're going to say we need to start you know co collecting some of that but it's it's not um 
you know, that's when things aren't going as planned, you know. Yeah. So, but, but yeah, extensions are definitely available and the, the terms stay the same. It's just we might want to collect maybe some deferred. So yeah, if you've been deferring payments the whole time, we're going to want to start collecting payments. Let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. So you're saying like, um, you talking about the average, I know that's per scenario. Mm -hmm. um, so disclaimer. Right. Um, <laughs> but you're saying nine months is kind of your standard? Mm -hmm. that's, I mean, that, that's great. That's, that's a good, kind of what we default to. Yeah. Yeah, because six months, you, you get know. get a lot done in nine months. Hopefully. Right, yeah. Uh -huh. And especially, like, new construction can, can take that long. So, um, but most of the flips are comfortably being done in six months, I would say. You know, start to finish to, to, to the next, to, look, to the other closings. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I'm Dan McDuff. I'm a buyer's agent with Team Winfield over here. Um, and one of the things we're seeing is that properties go on the market in the morning and then they're under contract by night and they're going for, you know, 10, 20 grand over appraised value with appraisal guarantees and all that. What are you doing to help us help our clients or, you know, help investors be able to snag those properties if they, if the, the numbers still make sense? For example, a lot of the times I'm putting in offers on a Saturday night. Is someone at your company going to answer the phone and get that prequal letter so that I can? Get a, get a deal locked down? <laughs> First, let me say thank you for that question. And I can't stand it with people that are being interviewed. Go, thank you for that question. But really, thank you, because I <laughs> forgot to say that. And that is something that sets us apart, is we're going to give you an answer in 24 hours. If you give it to us in the morning, you know, Mike and I are dividing up the deals. And, you know, they come directly to our emails. We're looking at those deals. We're, we intend to give you an answer, like, before Two is really, you know, what we're aiming for. It doesn't always work out. You know, people don't always return the call. And yes, Mike does work sometimes on the weekend. Sometimes, you know, I get the urgent, you know, text and, uh, you know, I'll look at it and uh, we'll give you proof of funds. I'm not going to guarantee you we'll do it on the weekends, but a lot of times, you know, you can tell them, hey, I'm working with Richmond Mortgage and they'll get it to you on Monday, you know, and we will. And so that is something that sets us apart is, is quick answers so that you can go ahead because it is, it's very competitive out there now and we know that. So we, we try to help with that. So get you your proof of funds. Anybody else here got anything? Try to like open it up online and try to open it up here. I know we got a few guys, so. No? <laughs> anything, guys? <laughs> Nothing? Okay, anything online, Ashley? Anybody writing anything? Okay. Cool. Um, was there anything that you felt like you missed or something you wanted to talk to or go back to or anything like that? You feel like you got out what you wanted and... Um, I think so. Okay. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I, the last thing was, um, you know, we talked a lot about the um, the the asset and, and assessing that. But the other thing we're doing is assessing your experience. And so, you know, being a realtor counts because that means you know what sells, you know what it takes to sell, what a house needs to look like to sell. You know, let's say you're a contractor who's done a lot of flips for other people, you've just never done one for yourself, that counts. Um, if we can have verifiable experience where you can give us the address and maybe it's on the MLS or maybe you can send us pictures, tell us, you know, what you bought it for, what you paid to repair, what you sold it for, that's verifiable experience and, you know, that counts. And that doesn't say we're, we don't work with first timers because we do. Um, but it's always good if they're working with somebody like somebody like you that, that can help them along the way. But we intend to be that. Uh, second set of eyes looking at the deal to let you know. I guess this is one important thing I didn't say is the, the first thing we're going to do is see if this deal makes sense. Are you going to make money? Are we going to make money? Because if not, uh, then let's find another deal. You know, we'd love to work with you, but not on this deal. So let's keep looking. That can happen, especially when you're, you start out and, you know, We've got a lot of experience, and we're going to say, you know, you're not, you're not going to get that, or you, you can't fix this house up for that much, or something like that, because we want you to come back and do it again, and do it again. And we have a lot of repeat customers, and we're really proud of that. And I will say this. I've dealt with 
some of these online companies mm-hmm. and it's <laughs> not the same case. No, so not at all. I think there is a huge value in that in actually caring for local guys, lending, local maybe, lending. Mm-hmm. I'm assuming your model is not to just pick up properties. <laughs> no, no, we don't it's enjoy to, it. It's, yeah. to, it's to so do that's... money. Right. Mm-hmm. So a lot of these online companies are, are not based that way and you get a totally different experience. How would you say you guys kind of separate yourself from these online conglomerates that just kind of give a loan to, to everybody and their stepbrother? <laughs> well, I think for one thing, when you call us, call Mike or me, we're, we're the decision makers. So we're the ones that are going to be able to say, yes, I can waive the appraisal, or no, I, I want an appraisal on this. Um, we're you know, going to give you an answer fast. And if we need something in addition, say, you know, we can approve this, but we need to see this property. And so it's subject to Richmond Mortgage inspecting it. You know, you're going to know what you need to do in order to make this deal work rather than this whole oh, you know, get down the road a week and, oh, we really need more down. Or I've heard horror stories of literally on closing day, oh, we need $10,000 more down. Well, you know, where are you going to get that? Yeah. <laughs> you, know, that's, you didn't say that. So, um, you know, as we set up the deal and any conditions we have, those are going to be the conditions. And you're, you're going to know when we say we're going to fund the deal, we're going to show up with the money and we're going to close. I like to go off of that and say for guys online and guys here, I have heard people in the past be like, oh man, that lender's just not done like me or that lender has a thing against the deal. And it's like, no, the deal doesn't work. Mm -hmm. So if anything, look at the lender as a person of help, right? Look at the lean on that lender for the help instead of a a detriment. They have the experience. They want their money back. They want you to make money, right? So think about that for the guys that are online and here that – I've never, ever had when lending or borrowing or whatever, I've never gone to a person that had experience more than I did and go like, what's your problem? Are you serious? <laughs> like, I mean, does anybody want to hear that to <laughs> say like, oh, I can't wait to work with you, right? Like, that's just not a thing. So have an open mind, have an open idea of listening to that person that has the experience. They're where they are for a reason. Right. So really lean on that. I think that's a big thing that a lot of people miss. So Ashley said we had a few more questions online. Let me get her the microphone. Okay. So first question is, do you have any broker programs? Broker programs. Well, right. Um, we do that in, in that if you bring us a loan, we're, we're gonna we, we can pay a referral fee is, is that what you mean you think i don't know um maybe <laughs> yeah so i can't see who asked this question but if you could uh give us some more detail we'll try to answer it um the next question is uh do do your loans require an appraisal or is a quick cma fine um sometimes we will you know, go with the, uh, if, if Mike and I are really familiar with the area and we're really confident, we've got a lot of comps backing us up, we might say, no, you know, no, no appraisal on this one. Um, we, we've done a CMA and we're good with it. Other times we do get an appraisal and, um, you know, we've got contacts that uh, give us some quick turnaround, but even, you know, so even though they promised us a week these days, they're stretching us out to 10 days. But we will require an appraisal, and that will be an after-repair appraisal. So they will look at it as once it's fixed up, not the as-is value, the after-repair value. Which That's is what probably we're... why you want to have that sheet filled out correctly. Exactly. Yeah, the appraiser is going to need to know that. They're going to need to know what, appraises, what, what uh, repairs you're going to do, what finishes are you going to use, and so that they can look for houses with similar level of, of um, rehab. Okay. Hmm? The and then the gray, yeah. <laughs> Forget the gray. Must be, yeah, it gray. must be gray with white trim. And um, gray, yeah, gray granite. Yeah, we got to have All right, it. we got some elaboration on that. Yeah. And um, it says, yes, I'm a private money broker, and we connect with other lenders that have broker portals, paid at closing with obliga- or, obligation, origination fees or referrals. So that goes back to the, do you have any broker programs question? Not a specific uh, 
program, I wouldn't say, but we do, you know, have friendly referrals back and forth, and we, we can, you know, pay a fee, and we'll put that HUD and, you know, put that on the, the HUD, the, the settlement statement to make sure that they get paid. So, yeah. Sounds like a soft okay. yes. That'd be soft great. yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. All right. Yeah. Um, I mean, we've, we're still going to look at the deal like we always would. Yeah. Right. So we've got one more, and this will be our last one. For anyone that's here, last call is at 8.45, so that's in 15 minutes. Um, but here's our last question, and then we'll get to some networking. And it is, what can we do to streamline that pre-approval? Do you have a template with numbers and return that you are looking to stay within so that we know our buyers will be safe putting offers in? That was a um, Vanessa question. <laughs> okay. Well, right. You want to know that th that it that it's um, within 70% of the after repair value. I mean, that's really the magic number. Don't, that's the loan to value. So the loan you're looking for. 70% LTV. LTV, yes, loan to value of the ARV, after repair value. So. Um, so what Sean told me all those years ago actually is true. It's a thing. Yeah. Uh -huh. He still, <laughs> he still talks about it. He still talks about it all the time. Uh, yep. <laughs> so, um, well, and, and if, it's, if it's a realtor or something and they want to run it by me on the phone, you can always do that. You can run a deal by me on the phone, but I'm still going to need the address. I'm still going to need to know the rehab amount. I mean, the main things are the purchase price, the rehab, and the after repair value. That's what, what we're looking for. So. Okay. So, yeah, I'm gonna call. Um, and just, I think, any specific requirement for the appraiser? Like, i.e., a member of an appraiser association? Like, do they have to be a member? Um, we already have a, a specific list of appraisals and uh, appraisers, and we will accept certain appraisals if you already have an appraisal. And no, it doesn't have to be, you know, FIREA and, and all these different things. You need to be a licensed appraiser, though. Um, so, yeah. So, would we be able to get a hold of your application? That's something that. Richmondmortgage.com. Go to the. Yes, okay, uh-huh, please take these, right? And maybe we could, yes. We'll put that link in our, um, yeah, we will put the link for Richmond Mortgage's website that has this form that you're going to want to fill out, the five-minute loan application. Mm -hmm. The ladies are going to put it in the chat hangout, so you guys can take that and open it up and see what that looks like. Mm -hmm. I think this is a really good example of, this is a lender that's giving you guys literally on a plate what is needed. So if it goes back to the bare bone principles, this would be what we talk about a lot in the property walkthroughs to understand your big ticket numbers, right? So the roof, the windows, the kitchens, the baths, the floors, the HVAC, the electrical, the plumbing, like by the time you get through that, and I'm pretty sure it's on this it's application, mm -hmm. then you will get close enough to the number to where the lender is comfortable. Right. So take that for what it is and make your own spreadsheet, make your own documentation so you can have it filled out. And we are in 2021, folks. So, you know, Google Drive, Google, <laughs> Google Forms, <laughs> like, right. even on your this. phone. <laughs> if your numbers don't work. Don't blame the hard money lender. Totally. Now, 70 percent is tough in this market. Don't, Very. don't be fooled. It's a tough, it's Very. tough to reach that. But there's a reason that's there. And if you're close to it, have that conversation. Mm -hmm. But it's not its not the hard money lender's fault. If they don't care about it and they're saying you can do whatever you want, whenever you want, that's when you need to worry. Yeah, yeah. that's a scary thought. All right, well, anything else, Lisa, that you have that you can think about? Thank you so much yeah. for coming out. I really appreciate it. If there are more questions, just call me. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Oh. I guess we got to do what are we drinking. Shoot, I don't actually know what I'm drinking. I, ha I have the game on, IPA. So what are you on? Game on. 
I don't think so. <laughs> no, we're still on. We talk about this. Game on, IPA. Yeah. As well. I'm glad he said that because I totally forgot what it yep. was. Yep. Yep. So what, what are you guys here having? Anybody? Well, I know y'all have some empty glasses, but what'd you have? Hazy IPA? Nice. <laughs> things, things, you don't say. things you don't say here hazy ipa same thing pilsner okay nice max game on nice the ipa classic the blue and the pilsner okay cool jp pilsner nice awesome what <laughs> Oh, so we got a Stella online. Okay. I have a fancy glass. Cool. For real. No more. All right. No well, more guys, speech. thank you so much for coming in, being online, and Lisa for coming in. I know she came in at very short notice and uh, came in anyway, so I really appreciate it. Thank you for coming down and hanging out with us. Um, anything here, guys, that you have questions for? You're good to go? Good, good, good. All right. Oh, thank you all for joining us. Um, it was great. Yeah, yeah. A ton of information. Thank you, Lisa. Yep. Um, and we will see you guys next month. Um, Airbnb. Airbnb. And we got a lot to talk about. Yeah. Norfolk, Virginia Beach are like totally different now. It's all crazy and people are chopping off heads. So be ready. So guys, remember next month, uh, for those that are still in line with us and then here, we are going to be at Bold Mariner in Norfolk. And we're going to be talking about Airbnb. Right. So you don't have to stretch all the way down to the ocean front of Virginia Beach. You can come across the tunnel and be right there at the tunnel. June 29th. June 29th. So that'll be the, the next meeting. Every, every yep. And Sean, I like your Captain Morgan, by the way. Hey. <laughs> so, guys, thanks again for joining us. I really appreciate it for all the time that you spend with us. I know you could spend time other places, and we appreciate you guys joining us online and locally and in person. So, looking forward to having more people as we get back into the norm and having people talk to each other and high five bump fists and just be back. Cause this is, this is where all this started guys. So really enjoy it. So thanks again. We'll see you guys on the next one.